All right, I want you to notice here these large pebbles that are cemented in a very fine sandstone siltstone. And these pebbles were rounded by a creek or something long before they were ever sealed in. And one of the theories is, by Dr. Merriton, is that a dye-based dike cooked this into the situation that it's in, baked it. And now that erosion has cleaned the soil away, you see the big pebbles that are cemented in the sandstone. You want to make a comment as to where we are? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let me see. Where this is great stone. Yes. Well, we are in the northeastern part of the Triassic that stretches all the way from down the southwestern part of Pennsylvania County all the way up to the northeastern part. We are about almost to the upper part of the northeastern range of this Triassic deposit, which was a very large sedimentary deposit from inland lakes up here, coming down this way. That ought to be enough for us. Now let's go up. See, erosion has exposed these ancient stratas here. Probably after years and years of water washing over, it exposed these particular groups of rocks. Now, whether they were actually cooked and baked by diabased dikes is questionable, but it certainly isn't questionable that these are a certain type of rock that are found and exposed by erosion, and they are definitely sedimentary in origin. All right, you notice here. Another theory about these rocks is this, that back when this used to be a sand washing down uh, into a gulch, into a ravine, large pebbles accumulated at the bottom, which is called a fan. So some people call this a fan glomer. You can see here the rather large pebbles in a matrix of sandstone. And notice that they're of different materials. And so what happened, as this was hardened, by a process called diagenesis. It was compacted, all the sandstones and the larger pebble, all the sand, and made into a stone. And now when you cut it away or it's eroded away, you can see the original stones that were cemented by compaction and recrystallization into a rock which we call, this is a sandstone conglomerate, or else, because some of are angular, you could call it a, a sandstone breccia which has angular pebbles rather than round pebbles. Now, can we go over to this place over here? One of the most interesting things in here, if you stop to think about it, here is a granite-like member of the igneous family called quartz monzonite, which is a type of granite. Now, this is a granite pebble. The most interesting, I think, in revealing things about these big conglomerates, fan conglomerates, or if you want to call them brecciated conglomerates, is that here you have an alien stone here. Here you have an igneous rock that's sealed in to the sedimentary in the same matrix as these other pebbles and all. And this happens to be an igneous rock in the granite group called quartz monzonite. It has two kinds of feldspars in it, and it's way different than a lot of these other rocks are. So it was believed that these washed down the sides of the ravine, or canyons, and fell to the bottom and were later on consolidated with sand and lithified, turned to rock later on in the matrix that they were in. Uh, Straight Stone Creek, and we picked up this little rock here that's very interesting because like the others, it's a sandstone or siltstone that's been indurated and hardened in a process called diagenesis where sand is eventually turned into rock. But notice that you have a piece of schist in here and you have a piece of basalt and you have several kinds of rocks in here. And the British and some of the American geologists call this gray wax. Well, let's see what's on the other side. All right, look at here. Here's another piece 
of your quartz monzonite, which is an igneous rock. It's not sedimentary at all, but it's sealed into this, which shows that the mother rock that originated this came from the sides of the Great Triassic Basin down into the ravines that led to the big lake. And if you look at this and hold it at a certain angle, you'll see that it's composed of two kinds of feldspar. Actually, it's got an alkaline feldspar and another type. And that plus a little bit of quartz makes it a granite type that they call quartz monzonite. Now, the feldspars, one is the alkaline, the other is plagioclase. And when you study the rocks, you'll be able, with a magnifying glass, to tell the difference, at least when your feldspar is compared with quartz and other things. Okay, we, we think this is really a fabulous exposure here on Straight Stone Creek. Here's a quartz pebble, a rather large one. And here's a nisoid pebble, and another piece of gneiss. And these old nisoid rocks are definitely metamorphic. So what do you have included in this cemented type of sandstone conglomerate? You have quartz, igneous rocks, and metamorphic rocks, and other things, even little bits of probably petrified wood and other remnants that usually form when a lake is filled up and, and compaction turns it to rock. The edges of the lake particularly, the ravines, where you get the fan-shaped rocks coming down from the higher ground into the ravine. And then later on they're covered up and turned into, look at some of the shapes of these. 